keep moving towards me. That's right. I won't hurt you. All right, we're back. I don't know what happened there, but I just totally lost the video. So it's gone, gone, gone in the wind. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and play back what we have. Yeah, you're, you're coming around to me. You can keep coming over. I, I, I promise I won't hurt you. If you wanna reach out and touch me, as long as you're gentle and you don't hurt me, say, I, I, that's it, I won't hurt you. I'm just gonna play back what I asked before. Because John said he heard a voice. Ready? Or not? Hold on. Yeah, we're back. It just ended the video. I don't know what happened. Can you tell me what state you're from? Oh, there's a voice. I'm away from you. Can you tell me what state you tell me what? Can you tell me what state you're from? It sounds like the first three words are I'm from, but I don't know what it says after that. Play that beginning part again. Do you know where? I definitely hear I'm from. No, you didn't go back far enough. It's quite right a state. Question. You're from? Yeah. Oh, here it now. In the beginning, I heard I'm from something, something. Well, I want to go back to the very first question because there was a voice there. All right. Can you give me one of your names, please? Can you tell me what, can you? It's Tom. Yeah, it's Tom. Can you tell me what state you're from? Somebody said it's Tom. Can't make that out. Do you know where you are right now? Get scratch that over by the REM pod. It's picking up on something there. Get it away from you. Yeah. All right, do another one. This way. We'll get all the way through it. So, you've got the gist of what this is. Try not to mess with his equipment. But mess you heard the these. name Tom. So. Okay, Tom. And whoever's here. That was a child's voice, too. That was very faint and all right, low. So, we're going to try this again. You ready? I'm going to ask you again if you can give me a name, please. Can you tell me how many children you have?
Can you tell me what this memorial is made out of? May I please ask what your age is? Does Tom have sisters or brothers? Are you from Kentucky? Would you like to go back home? Could you please tell me what your mother's name is? Is there anything that you would like to say that I did not ask? Thank you. Let's see. Can you explain that? ask you again if you can give me a name please turn the off. can you tell me how many children you have Can you tell me what this memorial is made out of? May I please ask what your age is? Does Tom have sisters or brothers? Are you from Kentucky?
Would you like to go back home? Could you please tell me what your mother's name is? Is there anything that you would like to say that I did not ask? Thank you. Nope. Let me turn off the heat so we don't get that rotating noise. Stop that background noise. All right, you gonna switch or? Um. Yeah, I guess. That light is all purple now. Yeah, Nothing. I know. I see it. And the EDI hasn't gone it's off like one it time. It literally went away. It's like there was dead silence. That's me get, making the statics go off. I can always move this stuff. Hold this. There you go. So we got... That's Tom. That was clear. That was the only one, though. Yeah. Again, well. The equipment reacted a little. Just a little. I mean, again, they're not all... Um, they're not all active and energy-filled and willing, you know? It's not always the case. Turn around here as I can. Your state off. No, Carmen, not tonight. Watch yourself. Ugh. That thing's a monster. Wait, do you see what we got coming up next? So you guys all have to. If you haven't done it, you need to make a visit to the Creeper Gallery. This book is very haunted. Right here is the uh, famous cursed box in a glass. Let me see if I can put a light on it for you. Yeah. Those are a few of our other haunted items. Men and the woman. Get out of your way. The chains. The baya. You said that desk is pretty heavy, huh? It, it's 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 heavy. It's definitely got some weight to it. The haunted dolls. Haunted Himmel books. I'm gonna tip this stuff to the side. The booklet. I'm gonna close. Baby boots. Get out of John's way. Yeah, just bear with us as we're setting up. That was a really tough. Uh, reset. Yes, actually, Carmen, we are going to be doing a few um, events at the Creeper Gallery. They're working on the dates. What's your... Here's the info... I need to open this booklet. Pictures inside of it. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm going to make sure you guys can see. So that's just, a, it's a book of... There's no... 
title to it. Just has a bunch of keepsakes and pictures in it. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, a little photo. So it's a photo album. Yeah. Really delicate. I don't want to pull too hard. Yeah, it's pretty old. So I'm going to put this up here on top. <coughs> <coughs> so here's the, the card, the information. You see that? Yeah. General McClellan Field Desk and Family Album. So it is a family album. Major General George B. McClellan, 12-3-1826 uh, in Philadelphia. That's when he was born. And he died on 10-29-1885 in West Orange, New Jersey, which is where I'm from, by the way, uh, of a heart attack at the age of 58. Oh, young. He was a Civil War general that fought for the Union and the 24th governor of New Jersey from 1878 to 1881. Um, his nickname was Little Mac. His That's what was, David said. <laughs> what? He said Little Mac before his you said it. His wife was Ellen Mary Marcy. His father Samuel was a Revolutionary War general and has made his presence known. Like the father, so Samuel, um, and General George. So Samuel McLennan and George. They said he was a very famous general. General George. Okay, so I'm going to hold on to that. To reset a little bit here. No, there's no uniforms in here. What you do with everything else? Right here. I'm trying to hand them to you. All right, General, just bear with me one second here. me. Did it say anything about him having children? Um, no. No. She said his wife was Ellen and his father was Samuel. Uh, is that it? So y'all can see. Uh, let's reset. Lights out. Yeah, I'm going to move this. I want a different angle. Because as soon as I sit down... It gets in the way? Well, all you see is me. So move to your other side. The other way. The other way. Um, okay, don't move the other way. Kathy said that his daughter was named May. All right. Turn the light off. Okay, and away we go. Uh, so, the SLS still had me, or is it more outside? You. Yeah. It literally is mapping you. I'm going to show everybody so they can see this. That's where it's mapping oh, John. More towards that way. Oh no, I got a good view. You're, you're in the corner. All right, so General George McClellan, General, my name is John, this is Chris, we um, have an item that, but, yeah, there you go, see the static up on top? Yeah, a little that. bit of red, you guys see the red glow we by the purple lights? We have an item that belonged to you. This was actually um, your field desk. I guess you use this out in the field to uh, write orders, to write notes back home to your family, I'm sure. 
I'm sure used it for a lot of different things. Um, so I'm sure with that desk, I've seen a lot of things um, and written a lot of, like I said, messages that were both touching and personal to your family, to your wife and your daughter, as well as to the other men who you commanded. I'm sure there was a lot of historical uh, documents that were written. Yeah, there you go. See the on the bottom? Yep. That were written on that desk there, which, again, it's an honor to have something like that here uh, with us. Uh, just to explain to you, I, I know this is going to seem kind of strange to you, but um, we were invited here to try to speak with you or your father, Samuel, or your wife, Ellen, or your daughter, um, anybody who may be here and near and around or attached to your field desk there. Uh, there's also your family photo album that I did see a lot of pictures in there. And, and again, very, very touching memento uh, of your family. Um, and it's nice that it is still kept with your field desk, I'm sure. Okay. Look wow. at that. That is crazy. Thank you, General. Okay. Again, I'm sure it means a lot to you that, that they are still together after all of these years. You passed in... 1885 in West Orange. I'm actually, I'm from West Orange. I lived there for the first 19 years of my life. I'm now 53. So um, West Orange was near and dear to me as well throughout my childhood. Um, so we do have that in common, uh, that my family lived there as well as your family. Um, he said that he ran against Abe Lincoln and that he didn't listen to him. Okay. So we're, we're, we'll get all to that. Um, General, my name is John. This is Chris. Um, we usually come here to, again, speak with who's ever maybe around or attached to or connected to things that belong to them, things that were important to them. Um, again, this is your field desk and your family photo album that is still around after all of these years, this is the year 2022, believe it or not. So this is many, many years removed from when you would have used that desk. And um, it's impressive that it's still in great shape and that it, again, is still with your family photo album. I think that's wonderful. And, and the person who is the caretaker of those items now that belong to you, her name is Donna. She's the one who owns this establishment, and she's looking out after them. Um, I don't know where she um, obtained these objects for, uh, from. I don't know who owned them before she did, but um, she's going to take care of them, I'm sure. You can see she put them in a, a nice case there that they're protected from, you know, the temperature, the elements. Um, and whoever purchases these items that belong to you, I'm sure will take care of them as well. And your memory and these items will be kept and live on for many, many more years. I'm, I'm sure that's going to make you happy and proud in some respect. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to connect with you. you you've already seen the way these, these pieces of equipment work that we have around your field desk. That one that you already made light up the color green. This is a, like a music box like you had, that you had to wind up, only this one you don't have to wind up. You just take your hand or your body and you put it near it. Not good music, mm -hmm. but music. And you get the different colors. Red, yellow, blue, red. That was all just by moving my hand near it and you've already done that this one here that looks like a, a circle and it's the color red this one again you've already kind of figured out if you move your hand near it around it lights up all the colors of the rainbow didn't hurt you the first time it won't hurt you if you go near it same thing with the the two fingers that are on top that look like this oh yep there you go perfect see 
and the two fingers on the top that are like this, they'll light up green and red if you wave your hands near them. We have or, an intelligent... Or if you try to pick up your photo album or look through the pages, they're going to light up green and red. Or if you're trying to touch your desk or anything inside of it. I also put... You can't really see from here. You see these little tiny... They look like marbles. If I touch those and roll them, they're going to twinkle. And I put some of them inside where you really won't be able to see them from there. You will, I guess, if they... If they but again, everything, everything there, just by touching it. That's all I did was use my hands. Nothing there is that hard to operate. And you being a general, I'm sure, or a very intelligent man, leader, leader of men... I'm sure these things are kind of, should be kind of simple for you to just touch with your hand if you want to interact with myself or, or Chris. Again, we're very happy to meet you. Um, we don't get to talk to many generals, so this is an honor. Um, General, is it true? Do you, do you know how you pass, that you pass from a heart attack at the age of 58? Do you remember having pains in your chest, shortness of breath? Do you remember that? Again, you could just move your hands by anything that's over there to answer because we can't really hear you right now. You could be standing there and talking, but we can't hear you. You don't remember that, General? What about your wife, Ellen? Ellen Mary... Marcy, is Ellen still with you? Is she with you now? That's a great start. Yeah. <laughs> it's, always, it's always good when you get a great start and then things kind of, you know, dissipate a little. Your father, um, Samuel McClellan, was a Revolutionary War general. Oh, so he followed in the father's footsteps. Samuel, are you here? On um, this this document here that I have in my hand, it says that you have somehow made your presence known. Is this you, Samuel, who's here? Touching these? What was that? You heard that ding? You know what's weird about that? There's a bell. Oh my God. Samuel? Is it Samuel? That There's a bell right up there. By that scary bell. Oh, like a service bell. Samuel, I asked if this was... I mentioned your name. And that circle lit up with the music. Samuel, is your picture in that photo album? I'm sure you're very proud of your son, that he was a general as well. That must have made you very, very proud. Are you together, all of you? Wow, that was pretty interesting. No, it's not a music box. It sounded just like there's a... No, it was a ding. It was ding. Yeah, hold it. Uh, put your flashlight up. So there's okay. actually, see the doll? There's, a, there's a, an old-fashioned ding. That would no. be on a bell. That would be on a desk. All right, let me, let me go over there. Just so, so you guys can see that it's mapping John. This is why. It was not loud, but it was a little It was louder. that sound, though. That was the, do it again. I'm trying to get a gentle. The lighter one wasn't that loud, though. Even if you touch it and flick it. That was more like maybe the spirit flick. just yeah you're the little flick that but was it was just, like, that's exactly what it sounded it was, like that was just a little flick of my finger so it rang that bell but i just wanted again, you guys what's to see gonna the, be what's going to be more recognizable that's john what's going to be more recognizable to someone from that era that or a that? bell the bell yeah Bells have been around forever so I'm actually going to take that bell. It's definitely the same sound. Everybody's that concurring bell. that that's exactly. I'm, I'm going to use it as a trigger. I'm going to put this down here, General. All right. That's me. Oh. 
Okay, General. That was okay, amazing. Okay, great. Oh. Thank you. All right. Thank you so we have much. A very intelligent. We're going to try to figure out if this is both uh, Major General George or General Samuel. I put the bell down here. I'm going to take this right here. That's me, that's me, that's me, that's me. It's over here by the bell, because you already rang the bell, I think. We heard a little tiny ting, like someone took their finger and tinged it. So I'll put that little ball next to it so you can touch that one or ting the bell again with your finger. I'm going to try to talk with you a few different ways, um, Major General or General Samuel McClellan. This box here looks a little strange, but because I can't hear you right now, we're gonna try this box first. And if you talk out loud, I don't know, we probably didn't have radios back in 1885, but this is gonna hopefully hear your voice. We'll be able to hear it out here together. And you'll be able to hear it. Um, after that, we're going to try something a little different to try to hear your voice as well. So we're going to give you um, the opportunity to actually speak and say, answer some questions. Uh, it says that you fought for the Union. The ball. Oh, there you right go. Right by the bell. See that? Right by the bell. Thank you. So this must be Major General... George McClellan, because I mentioned fighting for the Union, and that little ball there lit up literally as soon as I said that. And you must be aware that the Union won. Sounds to me like you made it through, and then you had your heart attack at 58. Now, I'm 53 now, so we're pretty close in age, and we both are, we both lived in West Orange, so that's, that's something. I actually enjoyed West Orange, West Orange a lot. It, um, I have a lot of great memories of West Orange growing up there. Uh, I, I'm sure none of those areas were, the streets weren't called what they were when I lived there, but um, West Orange, very nice town. And a lot of families lived there when I lived there. Do you think it was called West Orange back in 18, 1885? I don't know what it was called, but it says in West Orange, New Jersey, so yeah. that's what I'm going by. So what I'm going to, what I'm going to do... Okay. Okay. Right. He knows what it was called. Oh, yeah. Let the men talk. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to let, let the, the men, men talk. talk. General, general. That's general, right. General, New Jersey paranormal general. <laughs> general. We, we can relate. <laughs> I'll give you a general. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to try to answer some questions here. You've already been really, really, really attentive, and I appreciate you taking the time and and. I do appreciate you you speaking with us and interacting with us. Again, general, smart, smart guy. So you would think that none of this is too hard for any of them. So I'm going to try to turn on this box now, okay? And I really, really would love it if you could just try to talk out loud to answer the questions, okay? It would really help us understand more about you and your family. Um, Samuel, General Samuel McClellan, if you're here. Please feel free to answer as well. We'd love to speak with you. Um, I'm going to turn it on now, okay? He's both, Sally. What's happening? She said she thought you were a saint. You can be both. Mm. He wears many hats. Including this one. Mm. I'm lucky. Whoa, there we go. Okay, not to get nervous. This is another piece of equipment, okay? I'm looking to hear the name George or Sa I'm looking to hear the name George or Samuel. Captain. None of them were captains, but that's what I heard. Major George. Major General George B. McClellan. Or General Samuel McClellan. Which one of you are here? 
Could either of you please say your first name? I would very much appreciate it. So Samuel was revolutionary and yeah. George was civil war. Can you please tell me which which war that you fought in? Which war did you fight in? Could you please tell me that? Ellen, are you, Ellen, are you here? Oh my God, Ellen. Samuel, they, okay, since I said his name. Isn't that mm -hmm. crazy? He's reacting to you. Samuel. Should I call you General? Yep. General, um, are you here? General McClellan. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> Did you hear how loud he said that? Am I speaking to General Samuel McClellan? I know you answered it already, but we're just trying to reconfirm. That's all. Well, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm speaking to George or, or Samuel yeah. at this point. General, uh, should I, uh, do, do you like to be called Sam or Samuel? <laughs> Whoa, that was a curse word. That was and, a curse and word. And it lit up. And the rem <laughs> That was a curse word. It said, I'm effing something. <laughs> Is it working? That was a curse word. It said, I'm yeah, effing something. Boy. I got to listen to that back. General, I know I I keep asking the same questions here, and I'm being repetitive, but you and your son were both, he was a major general, and you were a general, but at least... Well, he was a major general, and you both share the last name. So you did fight in the revolution. You did fight in the Revolutionary War. Did you know George Washington? Was that Washington, or was that just what? I don't know. I couldn't make that out. All I heard was the it's yell. Not, it could have been like Washington, like Washington, like really quick. We'll have to go back. So you knew George Washington. Did you ever fight side by side with him? What was the, uh, the turncoat again? I can't remember. Benedict Arnold. Do you know who Benedict Arnold is? Do you know that name? He was a general. I was just going to say he was a general as well. Yeah. People are saying they heard Washington too. From the exactly. All right. I'd like to speak to your son if it's possible. Is he with, is he here with us? I heard a live voice. Did you run for president? I heard a live voice. Oh, really? I said, do you agree? Do I agree about what? I'm, I'd like to speak to my family. Oh, my God. Did you hear that? He's trying to get you Do you agree? Somebody's... And then it said, my family. That book has... A lot of your family in the book. I really didn't look through it to see who was in there. Does that represent a lot of the family from you to George to George's children? Are they in there as well? I 
was pretty damn good. If George could come out and talk to us, we heard George really didn't like Abe Lincoln. I'm going to try an EVP. Samuel's wife was named yeah, right here. Jemina. J what is it? Jemina. Jemina. Samuel, is your wife's name Jemina? Can you touch that one you've been touching here? The, the one with the green light that makes a noise? Ooh, that was pretty darn good. I can't wait to listen to that one back. Wow, that was really, really good. Oh, you definitely have to do an EVP Ooh, now. That was pretty darn good. Thank you for that. Uh, either of you, Major General or, or General. So no, let stick, me, no stick figures yet. Let me explain to you. See, I have a picture here. I don't know if that's a real picture of, uh, of Major General George McClellan. Is, it, is, this, is this picture accurate? Is this him? In my hand, do you see this? I'm turning it towards the desk. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, unlike this box here, where you can actually talk out loud, this one here, okay, look at that. He's responding to you. I asked about the picture. Is that yeah. a delayed reaction to the picture? Wow. Okay, so unlike this box here that I'm pointing at, where you can talk out loud, you can still talk out loud, but this one I'm not going to hear as you're talking, I'm going to hear it afterwards. I know that's kind of confusing, but you'll see what I mean. I still want you to answer out loud. Okay. So just a little more information. Samuel had a second wife named Rachel and people Rachel. would like you to ask questions that pertain to, um, George running for presidency against Lincoln. Okay. So George running against Lincoln for presidency, um, Samuel's wife was named. Her second one was the second wife was Rachel. No, that was that Samuel's or Samuel's. George's? Samuel. Oh, I'm not gonna get too deep into that. All right, ready. Major General George McClellan. Who did you run against? for President of the United States. General Samuel McClellan, can you tell me which war that you fought in? Is your picture in that photo album, General Samuel? General, Major General George McClellan, how many children did you have? Major General George McClellan, how many times were you married? What was either of your first wives name? Major General George McClellan, where were you living before you died?
General Samuel McClellan, how many years did you fight in the Revolutionary War? Did you ever meet George Washington? Major General George McClellan, are you aware that you died of a heart attack? Would you be upset, any of you, if these items here, the field desk, the photo album, if they didn't go back to someone in your family? Is there anything else either of you want us to know or would like to say that I haven't asked or mentioned? Would you be upset if the photo album was sold separate from the field desk? Okay, let's see what we got. Is the time right on your tablet? I don't know. Why? It says 10 o'clock. Is it really? Mm -hmm. We start at 7.30? No way. That's what I'm asking you if that's right. My phone's going to be. Well, they should tell you if you're watching. No, it's 9 o'clock. Okay. Major General George okay. McClellan. Who did you run against for President of the United States? General Samuel McClellan, can you tell me which war that you fought in? <laughs> Is your picture in that photo album, General Samuel? That photo album, General Samuel? It's just a breath. What? It's a breath. Just a beep. General, Major General George McClellan. How many children did you have? We're talking to the spare boss. Major 
Major General George McClellan, how many times were you married? What was either of your first wives name? What was either of your first wives name? This one. It's another breath. There's two breaths there for sure. They're like, oh. Major General George McClellan, where were you living before you died? Whoa, 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 whoa. Before you died. Oh, I thought I heard it. Maybe not. Before you died. It's, it's so low. Before you died. It's so low. Before you died. It does sound like West Orange, but it's so low. Before you died. It's really, really low. I'd have to amplify that. General Samuel McClellan, how many years did you fight in the Revolutionary War? Pod in the spirit box. Did you ever meet George Washington? Oh, yeah. Did you ever meet George Washington? Uh, yes. Yeah, it was like. Did you ever meet oh, yes. George Washington? Oh, yeah. Samuel's here. That's kind of weird. That Major was... General George McClellan, are you aware that you died of a heart attack? We had a couple. Of... Would you be upset? Any of you, if these items here, the field desk, the photo album, if they didn't go back to someone in your family. Is there anything else either of you want us to know or would like to say that I haven't asked or mentioned? Or mentioned? What does that say? I don't know. It's something, but I mentioned. Hear that? It's like, don't. Then ask. It's like, draw now. Or mention. Doesn't sound like, like, I don't know. Yeah. Or mention. Listen, just watch one out. I don't know what he's saying. It's like, don't. Would you be upset if the photo album was sold separate from the field desk? Oh, yep. that was pretty damn clear. Would you be upset if the photo album was sold separate 
from the field desk. Oh my God, you don't get clear that. That was loud and clear. Uh, would you be upset if the photo album was sold separate from the field desk? Woo. We heard who, that. I wonder who that is. I have such chills right now. Wow. Major General General, wow, that was a good one. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate your time and your, your willingness to, to interact with us. Uh, General Samuel, I you kind of responded every single time I mentioned his name, and I don't know if that was his son just kind of reacting no, to No, it's kind of funny, but father. whenever you referred to Samuel, you got a response from yeah, Samuel. Yeah, I mean, even the, the, when I was referencing the pinging of the bell. The yeah. cat ball went off. Yep. Okay, one more. And then, um, one more. We told Donna we try to do three. So, we'll try to do three, I guess. Although, I am kind of tired, but we'll try to squeeze this one out. <laughs> um, I gotta let's put, put that back in there. Yeah. And I'll get out of your way. All right, thank and you. You guys so will much. see the next piece. So much, General. Both of you. Thank you. As soon as he comes by with it, I'll give you a closer look at uh, what we were just investigating for those who didn't get a chance to see it. Thank you so much. That was really, really great. Just bear thank with us so as much. we uh, change over, guys. That was really, really good. Really good. So if you want to show them, I can turn the lights on real quick so they can really get Yeah, I'd, li I'd like them to be able to see this because it's a unique piece. All right. That's me hitting that, obviously. Right? What yeah. did he hit? Oh, right there. All right, so here's the, it's his writing box that he travels with. This is with. the field desk. Yeah. I guess these were his. And ink blocks yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And then this is, again, the photo album the right family. here. Family. You can see that. Yeah, you got to put it right there. There you go. That's the photo album. And there's There's a lot of photos in there. I'm trying to get to ones we have. Okay, there's one on the back that we didn't see. Yeah, we have no... There you go. Perfect. And it's filled with it's, it's filled, filled with, with pictures, photos, small photos, larger photos. And he doesn't want these separated. I mean, look at these; these are much smaller. Bear with me, guys. There we go. Tiny. Those are so tiny. It's like a thumbprint. Yeah. I mean, fingerprint. Really, really small. Watch your feet. Yeah. All right. Let me get out of your way. He's gonna put it back in its nice little spot. Sure, I don't have it just the way you had it, Donna, but I'm sure you can fix it. <laughs> All right, so I don't know what this one is. I think we took it out of the case last time. Sorry, guys, the glass. There you go. Here first. Okay, here comes the magic. Holy, holy. Just want to leave it in the glass. What do you think? Um, no, I'd, I'd take it out of the glass. Let's lift and catch it at the same time. All right, let me help you here. Coming up. 
Coming up, coming up, coming up. Got it. I'm glad you touched it first. Is there anything <laughs> not to touch this? Is it? Is it? Be modest. No. -uh. No, no, it's not. You just read this before like I did. No, I didn't really pay attention. I just saw the spot where it said the two. That was it. All Is right, it? guys. We'll show you. I'll have John hold it up as soon as he's done. So that is the essence of evil across. Got it. So I've got the uh, in my pocket, well, on my phone. Where's is, your phone? Right here. Oh, I can't do both. So hold this, please. All right, so he's texting me. Oh, he knew that was coming. Uh, let's see. All right, born in 1845, Ireland, raised in New York City before he went to seminary. Um, this is Father Patrick Ryan. He then lived in Cape Gurdu, Missouri. He studied St. Louis Archdiocese and was ordained at Our Lady of, I cut it off, of Seven Sorrows, Nashville, uh, 1869. He was a pastor of St. Peter and Paul's Parish in Chattanooga, 1872 to 1878. He died from yellow fever in 1875 while still tending to his flock who were sick and dying from the same illness. Uh, he was given last rites by his younger brother, the only uh, and only living relative of Father Michael Ryan. Uh, these items, um, this one here is a 18th century, how do you say that, reliquary cross? Yeah. With 14, 14 first class relics. I don't know what that means belonged to him during his final years of life. He was the original owner, as these pieces predate his time on Earth. So, he died of yellow fever. Okay, I'll, I'm going to have to read that back. As yeah, because that's around. pretty confusing. That's a, but it's just a lot to take in. Yeah. So, again, trying to communicate with a priest that's from that long ago and he died from yellow fever yeah he was tending to his flock who also had yellow fever so he died in the service yeah. of people and again which i'm sure happened look at that let's go all right oh you guys gotta i'm gonna shut this off so you can see this look at you guys saw how it was purple the whole entire night look at this look at this what is going on john To get red, it has to be touching. Oh, that's like super high EMF. Super. I can't even get them back to purple. What the hell happened? Like as soon as as soon as you put that down over, it's like boom. I can't even get them back to. Okay, well, that's a weird start. Okay, Father. I'm not the center of touch to you here. That was that one back there. Yeah. So you know, Father. Okay. I am a good Catholic boy. Sometimes. All right. You have a figure right next to you, sir. Don't move. Do not move. Whatever you do, John, stay right where you are. It's I'm going like to show you guys. The going off too. See? You see John, and you see that figure. Literally right next to John. Oh my goodness. See the uh, pressure going off on the EDI. Is it? Uh, Father Patrick Ryan. Um, that cross does not belong to me. I know that. 
Um, my name is John. This is Chris behind me. We were invited here to try to speak with you. If you don't mind, um, we'd just like to find out more about you. We know that you you passed in the service of your flock of the yellow fever. And I'm sorry, but that's how you passed. And it's, again, inspirational in these times, especially, is he still there? Somebody else? Yes, he's right next to you. It's inspirational in these times, what we're dealing with. I'm not sure if you're aware. Um, we have an epidemic, a pandemic as well, um, that has gone throughout the world. And um, lots of people have passed. And my mother passed from this pandemic. And there are many people like yourself that are tending to these people, taking care of them, putting themselves at risk in doing so for the last two or three years. So um, there you go. See the static in front of me? No, because you're blocking everything. Oh, I'm trying not to move. Cause you're I know. Your it's all right. Go ahead and move. Step back. Oh, yeah, he left. So like I said, there are many people that have lost their lives because of this um, pandemic that has gone throughout the world. It is sort of our version of a yellow fever. Just to show you guys, there's nothing. It's gone. We're going to just get John. Um, so Father, I'm just going to read it again. And if you go, if you're anywhere near that cross that belonged to you, um, you're going to see things glowing and illuminating. Yeah, like that. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> That's just lets us know that you're, you're close by the cross, okay? You know none of that okay. will hurt you. We would never bring anything in here that would hurt anybody. So above that yellow light, that EDI, if you guys, like, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a red glow off of the static that something's there. Yeah. How was this light? Okay. So I'm going to just read again. Did you hear that noise? Yeah, what was it? It was a corner. I thought it was you. No. I'm going to read again. This is the information we have about your father. And um, this is many, many, many years later. This is the year 2022, believe it or not, um, that we now have this. This pandemic, this modern plague, if you want to call it that, that is hopefully now just starting to ease some. But we've, we've lost a lot of people from this sickness, for sure. Um, born in 1845 in Ireland. And again, this we're in America now. Um, raised in New York City. Okay, so we're not far from New York City. We're actually, this is New Hope, Pennsylvania. And we live in New Jersey, so we're not far from New York City at all. Um, before he went to seminary, he then lived in Cape Gordeaux, Missouri. He studied at St. Louis Archdiocese and was ordained at Our Lady of Seven Sorrows in Nashville, 1869. Wow. He was pastor of St. Peter Paul Parish in Chattanooga, Tennessee from 1872 to 1878. See, this doesn't make sense. It said he was pastor there for three years, for six years, but then he died in 1875. So that can't be true. <laughs> um, he said that you passed from 1875 um, while still tending to his flock who were sick and dying from the same illness of yellow fever. You were given last rites by your younger brother uh, your only living relative. So that's what we have. And that this cross was one of the relics that belonged to you. Um, belonged to him during final years of his life. The original owner of these pieces. A gentle man, but a harsh priest. He is always around the cross. This is what a uh, person that we know said about you when handling that cross. 
So, Father, there is your picture here. I don't know what's over there behind you. Let me see if I can get him up here for you guys to see. You guys see that? I don't see any responses on here. Like any anybody's. So, Father. You heard me, right? Yeah. So, Father, again, my name is John. This is Chris. What we do is we try to talk to anyone who's still present around the things that meant a lot to them or belong to them. Um, not necessarily stuck on them or stuck to them, but just present around them, again, in spirit. I'm sure that you believe that. Um, I believe and I've seen that things that were important to people, you know, sometimes people stay near them just to make sure they're taken care of. And and across being one of those things, um, I'm sure you feel that way. Actually, somebody said, did we investigate this cross before? Yeah, I think we have. Yeah, long, long Donna, time ago. Donna asked us to, to do it again, so we're doing it again. So, um, Father, we did speak to you before. We did bring this cross out of the case, and this cross will be purchased by someone and someone else will take ownership of it. So we want to find out from you how you feel about that and if you are still around the cross. So if you were to come out from the cross like you did before, you're going to see just illuminating, glowing lights here all around. You know, again, these things just respond to me as a person moving my hand around them. None of these things hurt me. They won't hurt you. Um, We just want to be able to pass along any message or information or anything that you want people to know about the cross, about you, about your relationship to it, to the next person who may take ownership of it. That's why we're here. Look at the EDI just go. Yep. And that's a, that's a, a temperature spike of heat right there. So, again, I'm, I'm sure that they wouldn't have anything to worry about. This is a symbol, again, of the cross. Um, nothing to fear in God, in your relationship with God or anybody's relationship with God. I'm sure welcoming this, yeah, welcoming this item into your home would bring good energy and peace. Um, nothing bad. Okay, so... That's kind of, we want you to kind of let people know that. It's not necessarily going to go to a church. So that's the thing that I want you to know, that the the next owner of this piece, in all likelihood, they won't be a, a, a priest or a religious figure. It could be, I don't know, but there's a chance that it might not be. So if you have a problem... I mean, that's just going back and forth now. Yeah. Would you have a problem with someone who really wasn't as faithful as you owning that cross? I'm Uh. going to give you a chance to say these things out loud, okay? And if you're talking, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Either can Chris. We can't hear you right now. We did see somebody standing over there before, and if that was you, that's wonderful. But I am going to give you a chance... To, to, to speak out loud, okay? And we're, we're going to be kind of brief about this, but I do want to give you a chance to say something. Um, I'm really sorry about the way you passed, but being a religious man and someone who believes in God, I'm sure you are, yeah, I'm sure you are with him now. I'm sure you, you got your, your reward for your service in the church, helping people, taking care of people, dedicating your life to that cause. So I'm just going to give you a chance now to just speak and say whatever you want, okay? And these questions are going to revolve around the cross itself and who will take ownership of it after. I mean, seriously, what a huge sacrifice for we him to take care of. We don't know where it's been, though. See, that's the thing. I don't know where this cross has been from there to 
now. here. Yeah. So that's something that's the big unknown for, for me. So was it in religious hands? Was it in a church? Did it belong to someone who was very faithful? These things I don't know. So I apologize for that. So, but I am going to give you a chance to speak and we're going to ask some questions and I'm not going to take up much of your time though. Do you want me to do this? You want me to do Nope, it? you go right ahead, hon. Okay, Father, I want you to just try to talk out loud and answer whichever questions you want to. Um, I will be able to hear it, believe it or not, after, not, not during. And uh, you may be able to hear your own voice, which I'm sure will be strange to you. But um, just please feel free to say whatever you want to, okay? All right, here we go. Father Patrick Ryan, right? Father Patrick Ryan, are you present now around this cross that belonged to you? Do you know how old you were when you passed away? Did you have a favorite church or parish that you belonged to? Is there anyone who has owned this cross from the time that you did that shouldn't have? Where would you like to see this cross go if it was up to you? Would you have an issue with somebody owning this cross as part of a, just a collection of antiques as opposed to it being a religious symbol and someone who is faithful? Was your body buried in Ireland or was it buried here in the United States? Can you tell me if you are in heaven now and if you are with God? I don't know if I got to everybody's questions or if they had any i just wanted yeah to... the the bell is not haunted it was actually something that was wrong from the last uh item that we did and john we just didn't put it back up to get things moving all right i don't know if i'm going to use a spare box but this one or not i, I don't think so father patrick ryan are you present now 
around this cross that belonged to you? What was that? I don't know. Was that outside? No. What was that? What the? Who we? It's a car. It's got to be a car. Yeah. Do you know how old you were when you passed away? Did you have a favorite church or parish that you belonged to? See, there's something there too, but it's so You just can't wrong. pick up what it Did is. Did you have a favorite church or parish that you belonged to? It's not like it was two. Two of favorite them. Church or parish that you belong to? Sounds like two of them. Yeah, we don't, that's what we're trying to figure out. That you to? Yeah, two of them. See if you, I don't know if they can. Did you have a favorite church or parish that you belong to? Two. Sounds like two of them. Is there anyone who has on this cross from the time that you did that shouldn't have? Where would you like to see this cross go if it was up to you? What? Go, if it was up to you. Do you hear the breath before his? It, yeah. Cross. Go, if it was up to you. I, I can't make out what I'm saying. Go, if it was up to you. If it was up to you. I don't know what that says. We gotta go back and listen to it. Jew? Oh. That's weird. Would you have an issue with somebody owning this? cross as part of a, just a collection of antiques as opposed to it being a religious symbol and someone who is faithful? It's like in the background. It's like in the background, like you hear this voice, but it's so it's low. It's in the bathroom. It's like crap out of me. <laughs> was your body buried in Ireland, or was it buried here in the United States? Can you tell me if you are in heaven now and if you are with God?
Do you, you want me to tell you what it sounds like? Do you like when somebody's on their deathbed and they're trying to whisper to somebody in their ear and you can't hear what they're saying because they can't get their oh, voice? Right. Again, I, that's when I need to analyze that because it was a breath. It was a... Yeah. And then it's a... Like just trying to make out the word, but... That's, but that's when when enough. someone's leaning over and trying to talk to someone who's who's dying, it's like their voice and the way that they that they have a hard time hearing them. It's almost like that. Okay, so thank you again, Father. I know we we spoke with you before, but we appreciate you again speaking with us and interacting with us. And let's you, you something something was standing there, right? Yeah, so, something was standing right next to you when you were in the very beginning. I'm going to put this back where it belongs, but... Um, and just to show you guys, it's mapping John right now. Let me get to it. There we go. See? Mapping John. Saint and General John. He wears many hats. I don't even know what to do with you. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Um, Saturday night, we're live again, believe it or not. From the Burlington prison, where I'm sure we won't be dealing with any religious figures or cross or anything like that. So, um, thanks for watching. I'll see you tonight. Say good night. Good night. Good night. Good day. Be safe, good everybody. Evening. Be kind. Very important. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. Have a good night.